In this video, I'd like to look at some Snell's law data in Excel as a demonstration of using an if, and we'll also have to use some radians along the way. The spreadsheet that I'm going to be working on can be found at the URL seen here. So Snell's law tells you that uh, the index of a fraction, so a material can be has a property called the index of a fraction, and then we can send a beam of light uh, to the meeting of two different materials, and the beam of light seems to bend, and that is measured by the angles, theta one, theta two, uh, from the, the normal to the surface, the perpendicular to the surface. And so N1 and N2 are properties of material, theta one and theta two are angles to the normal of the surface, and Snell's law says that n1 times sine theta of 1 is equal to n2 sine theta of 2. And I'd like to solve for sine theta of 2. So I divide both sides by n2, so it cancel out over here on the right, and then I switch sides. Uh, so I have sine theta of 2 is n1 sine theta of 1 divided by n2. And then I can get solve for theta 2 by taking the inverse sine and then excel. That's going to be a sine. Computers usually say a sine, which is sort of short for arc sine. Um, and we can only do that if this number that we're going to take the inverse sine of is less than one. So that's where the if will come in. Okay. So here is some data that I've just sort of made up in this Excel spreadsheet. Um, I have the two indices of refraction of my materials. I have some uh, angle for the uh, first beam to the normal of the surface. And the first thing I need to do is Excel signs work in radians. So I must uh, convert these to radians. And Excel has a formula for that. So I'm going to use the radians formula. And so I am calculating the radians. Oh, I have this as a random number. That's why it's jumping around like that. OK, so that gave me a, the angle in radians by using the radians function of the angle. And I can come and get the uh, thin cross here and double click. and it you know, fills in the formula. And again, that jumping around is because for whatever reason I chose uh, these quantities to be random. So, all right. So we have the uh, angle theta one in radians. Now let's calculate this N one times sine theta one divided by N two. So N one was in cell A eight. Uh, the multiplications in Excel have to be made explicit. There is a sine function, so long as we have the angles and radians, we have a good sine function in Excel. I'm going to use the angle in radians, which was D8, close the sine, and then divide that by N2, which was C8. So I create that. Uh, quantity that I need, and then copy that down. OK. And now I'd like to calculate theta 2. And I can only do so. And I need to take the inverse sine of this quantity I just made in column E. But I can only do that if that quantity is less than 1. So I'm going to use here an equal. And I'm going to say if. And then I have my question I'm going to ask. If this quantity is less than one, uh, then I can go ahead and do the inverse sine, which is A sine in Excel, of this quantity. And close off the A sine. And otherwise, I'm just going to say, uh, and that there is no answer. And what happens is there's no refraction. So we say that there's a total internal 
collection. So that's very long and wordy. So make some room for that. So that's going, and again, I have these silly random numbers, so it's going to keep changing, but this number was small enough now for there to be an inverse. And I'm going to uh, take my formula, get the, this thin cross and copy down. And then you see that when the quantity was greater than one, I have no answer. It is just total internal reflection. Now I'd like to, again, when to, to use sine, I needed my angle in radians. And when I did the inverse sine, it gave me angles in radians. And so now I want to get uh, my answer back in degrees. And of course, Excel has a formula for that. And, but I can't, um, I can't take the inverse, uh, can't use the degree formula on this word. So I can say here, if um, what do I want to say? If this equals, I'll be obnoxious total internal reflection. Then I'm just going to say again, uh, total internal reflection. I'll just say TIR this time. And but if not, then I'm going to get the use my the degrees formula of Excel and calculate the degrees of F8. And again, the numbers are popping around because of my silly choice of randomness, but I'm going to copy this down. And when when there was when it was total internal reflection, I am not doing so. When this quantity was greater than one, there is no angle, and there's no angle in radians. So of course, there's no angle in degrees. So that's what I wanted to show you: a little work with radians and degrees, and uh, and if in Excel. So thank you for your attention.